G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's video we're going to be chatting about how to set yourself up to grow veggies successfully in your first aquaponic system and also what are the best varieties to plant when you're first starting out. Now before we get into what plants grow best in a brand new aquaponic system, I thought I'd touch on a couple of pointers for you folks that are new to aquaponics growing method so you can grow healthy, tasty veg as soon as you turn on the water pump for the very first time. Now after an aquaponic system is set up and the water is flowing, you're going to need to cycle the system before you add the fish. Now for you folks new to aquaponics, cycling the system means that we need to create a nitrogen cycle within the ecosystem that is the aquaponic system. We need to do this to transform the ammonia produced by the fish into fish friendly and plant available nitrates. What I'll do for you folks new to aquaponics is I'll leave a link down in the description that covers how to cycle an aquaponic system and also runs through some of the equipment you're going to need just for you aqua curious folks who are thinking about building your own system. How a system is cycled can greatly affect the number of plants you can start off with and how well they're going to grow for you. A lot of people cycle their system with a straight ammonia source like pure cleaning ammonia that contains no scents or other additives. Just a heads up for you Aussies, uh, pure ammonia is unavailable here as a cleaning product. Our cleaning ammonia has other additives that are not good for the fish or the plants in the aquaponic system and actually can be a little bit toxic. Now there is an ammonium source us Aussies and other folks around the world can use and it's called ammonium chloride. It's available from places like soap making suppliers and it's also used in the aquarium hobby trade as the ammonia of choice for cycling those smaller fish tank systems. One issue you will find when you are cycling a system only with with an ammonia based source is that you're only adding one element and that's ammonia which ultimately turns into nitrate. Now nitrate is a great source of nitrogen for the plants but plants require more elements to grow than just nitrogen. Many folks that cycle with just ammonia will find that their freshly added seedlings start to look very pale, often yellow, after a week or so. It's not that lush green growth they were expecting to see straight up. Now to help with any deficiencies that you may have by just adding ammonia, you can add in something like a liquid or a powdered kelp supplement. It's going to help with a lot of the deficiencies because you're only getting the ammonia or nitrate in the system. So a little bit of that doesn't hurt when you're cycling a system. And not only that, it is fish safe as well. So after the cycling process has been completed, you can continue to add it into the system just to help out with any deficiencies that you might find. When it comes to cycling, I prefer to use a fish emulsion called Charlie Carp, made from the invasive European carp that we have here destroying our waterways in Australia. It's only available in Australia, but there are very similar fish emulsion products available around the world, such as MaxiCrop Liquid Fish. These products are not only fish safe, meaning they won't leave any residue in the system that could harm the fish once you add them, but they're almost a complete fertilizer. Not totally complete, but it has a lot of elements in there. Nutrient breakdown list of the Charlie Carp shows it has phosphorus, calcium, potassium, copper, manganese, iron, molybdenum, uh, boron, as a few others as well. With those elements, it just is a really good all round product to use, not only to get the cycling process happening, but also to give the plants load of nutrition. Just a quick heads up folks, this video actually makes up one of the modules over on my aquaponics beginning guides there'll be a link that pops up there and one down in the description it's an online interactive beginner's guide for aquaponics uh, and this plant module is slightly longer over on the guide because I can fit more in over there uh, I've tried to keep it a little bit shorter for YouTube because yeah that's how YouTube likes its videos so if you'd like to purchase the guide by all means pop on that link down there there'll be a little discount code that scrolls across the screen in a minute and you can use that to get five dollars off for the first five people who use that code so yeah um, check out the guide if you're interested in learning more about aquaponics that's enough of me spruiking back to the good stuff now even though you may have cycled the system using a fish emulsion based product or supplemented the ammonia you've added with a little bit of kelp product, we're still going to need to keep in mind that you're most likely going to be adding very small young fish once the system is cycled. Now these fingerlings will not be consuming a large amount of feed, therefore not providing a lot of nitrate and other nutrients for the plants to take up. 
Now, unfortunately, I see many folks start to cycle their system and fully plan out all the beds with a load of tomatoes, greens of various varieties, herbs, capsicum, sweet peppers, after getting pretty bad advice, quite frankly, of social media groups or dodgy websites. Now, the truth is there just is not going to be enough nutrition in the small amount of fish feed your fingerlings require to be able to sustain a fully planted out aquaponic system. So what we're going to need to do is work out how many plants our system can sustain on the small amount of feed we'll be giving our newly added fingerlings. Now just a quick heads up on the feed calculations for commercial aquaponic systems. They're a lot more in depth. We're dealing with backyard aquaponic systems here. So a lot of the figures I'll be using will be generalizations. Now to kick us off, we'll look at an example of the amount of feed consumed by 25 jade perch fingerlings that weigh approximately five grams each. And I will be working in grams as a unit of measurement, but as fish feed rates are calculated by percentage of weight, you folks in the United States should be able to get the basic idea. In this example, we'll say a five gram fish generally consumes around about 2% of its body weight twice a day. And the easiest way to work out the total amount of feed needed to be given to our 25 fish is to find out the total biomass, biomass being the total weight of the fish in the fish tank, and then work out the 2% from there. Now 25 fish at 5 grams each give us a total biomass of 125 grams in the fish tank. 2% of 125 grams is 2.5 grams. Now as we're feeding the fish twice a day, that gives us a whopping total of 5 grams of fish feed per day that will be ultimately passing through the fish and become food for the plants in the grow beds. As to the amount of fish feed that needs to enter the system so the plants can grow nice and healthy, varies depending on which source you look up online. It's generally calculated as X amount of feed at a particular percentage of protein per X amount of surface area the plants are grown in. Now the feed most of us use to feed our fish in our backyard aquaponic systems run protein wise around about 30 to 45 percent. Now for my own system I like to use roughly around about 20 to 50 grams of fish feed per one square meter or nine square feet of grow bed space for basic leafy greens and herbs as they have relatively low nutrient requirements. Now when it comes to my fruiting plants, I prefer the feed rate to be over 50 grams per square meter or nine square feet, just because those plants do tend to be a little bit more nutrient demanding. Now back to our measly little five grams of fish feed for the fingerlings. As you can see, it's not going to support a lot of plants when we first start out. What I'd recommend is you start out with five to 10 small leafy greens or small herb plants to begin with, as these plants have relatively low nutrient requirements. You can then monitor the nitrate levels regularly with the test kit that you use to cycle your system and you can add in new plants as you find the nitrates start to climb. By all means, put those seedlings in there as soon as you start to cycle because in no time flat, the nitrates will turn up and the plants will be able to use them. One thing you can keep adding to keep the plants healthy is the kelp or seaweed additive as it has very little, if any, ammonia or nitrogen and it is going to help provide some extra potassium. It's fairly high in potassium as well as other micro elements that may not be in abundance in the waste provided by the fish after they assimilate the food. As the fish do put on more size, they will require more feed naturally and you're going to see this reflected in the nitrate test results. As the levels rise, you can start adding in more plants to the grow beds. I hope that helps you get your head around the nutrient cycle when you first start off an aquaponic system and just how much is actually in there um, for when you plant out. Now on to what are the best plants to actually stick in the grow beds once you start cycling the system. Now the best advice I can give you when it comes to deciding what to plant out in the grow beds first off is plant out what you like to eat. It's really no good planting out half a dozen pretty heirloom looking eggplants if you're only going to use one fruit in a meal every blue moon. You're better off looking for plants that you and the family are going to consume on a regular basis and start off with them. Now my pick of plants with a low nutrient requirement to get you started and they also suit a wide selection of growing zones around the world would be leafy greens and herbs as I mentioned just before. Plants such as Asian greens like bok choy or pak choy, lettuces of all varieties with the cut and come again and the loose leaf being our favorite along with the cos, we don't mind the cos and they're also known as remain by you folks over in the States. Uh, radishes and beets or beetroot, celery, chard, which is also known as silver beet here in Australia and fennel. As for the herbs, you know, there's loads of herbs chives, you've got your parsley, your sage, green onions, basil, thyme, oregano. They're also great selections when you're just starting off. 
I do hope that this video has helped you folks out who are new to aquaponics and looking for a little bit of information so you can start up your own system. I'd also like to thank you folks who do turn up every week uh, just to say good day when I post these videos to YouTube and Rumble. I really do appreciate it. And don't forget, we also do have our shop and our aquaponics beginner's guide if you'd like to help support the channel that way. But anyway, I will pretty much well leave it there. I do hope that you are all well and happy and your own gardens and aquaponics systems are booming and I'll catch you next week. Cheers folks and happy growing.